We have Senator Curtis King in I the house that. this morning. Good morning, Senator. Thanks for coming in. We well, appreciate it. Good morning, and thanks for the opportunity uh, to be with you this morning. A couple of that. very important things that you want to talk about today that you want to inform us all about. We're going to be talking about a, a payroll tax and a police reforms, uh, two big issues uh, that there's a lot of news about today. But let's start out with this, this new state employee payroll tax uh, law for for long-term care benefits. It sounds good. Uh, or so, does it? Or does it? So tell us about <laughs> it. What you, I suppose you have some you have some major concerns about this, right? Well, I do. Uh, I mean, the concept, uh, you know, you can. It, it may be good for some people, but not for everybody. Uh, but it was passed in 2019. Uh, it was passed in 2019, and then we revised it a little bit uh, this last session. Um, you have to, the only way you can opt out of this, so, so they're going to take 0.58% if you, ha if you have a W-2, starting January 1st, 0.58% of your income is going into the long-term care trust fund. Now, that's been termed Washington Cares fund, but it's still the long-term care trust yeah, fund. I think it's Washington caring about covering its own butt in Medicare. Yeah. Well, what, could, what well, somebody well, said was Washington cares and Washington scares. So yeah, it's a, well, but, it, but, it, but everybody's paying in. The only way you can opt out is to have a long-term personal long-term care plan of some kind. Uh, and even that is kind of the, the definition of that is kind of up in the air. The, the commissioner, insurance commissioner, has issued some guidelines, but I can tell you, I was talking to an insurance company, a very well-known insurance company, who believes their policies would would meet the criteria, but they're not sure because it's so vague. Hmm. Um, but uh, so, uh, first of all, the zero point five eight percent. You know, th that that may be it may not sound like much to someone. And so they're going to be like, well, I'll go ahead. But if you I mean, make fifty thousand dollars a year, it's two hundred and ninety dollars yeah. a year. I think that's yeah. the number. Okay. If I have that correct, I okay. believe I do. Um, but there's just uh, that point five eight is is patterned around a whole bunch of of uh, uh, decisions that have been made. And I, and I believe uh, the way it looks to me is that they were made to come up with the 0.58 because everybody's going to say, well, you know, that's not much. Right, but, right. So it's not portable. So you could pay into this for 40 oh. years. And, and uh, as with me and my wife, if, if uh, our kids move to uh, Iowa and they said, Mom, Dad, come out here so we can help you in your yeah. old age. Yeah. You, know, you lose that benefit, and you could have paid into it for 40, 30, 40 years. Um, if, you, if you live in Oregon or Idaho, but you work in Washington, you have to pay, even though you're not eligible for the benefit. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. And, and uh, I mean, it, it, those kinds of things just keep going, on, and, that's, and that's my concern. And there's only going to be so much available for me in the end, right? Thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars is the maximum that they can pay out, uh, and then I found out this last week that the maximum they can pay on a monthly basis is three thousand dollars. Well, <laughs> we've been told by other insurance people that you know a, a decent to a good uh, long-term care facility. Oh yeah, is is five to ten thousand oh. dollars a month. Easy. So so the the, the low-income people that this is designed to help. You're going to give them three thousand a month, but they got to pay five. So where are they going to come up with the additional money? I mean, it's it's just those kinds of elements that have me concerned. And I truly believe that most of our citizens out there have no idea that this is coming. That in January, when they get their check, and and you know there's there's going to be money taken out. Yeah. So now yeah. you got paid. Uh, paid family and medical leave to coming out, and now you're going to have long-term care, Washington Cares, coming out, uh, and there's no cap. I mean, if if you make fifteen dollars an hour, you're paying point five eight. If you make two hundred thousand dollars a year, you're paying point five eight. And there's no cap on how much people have to pay in. And um, you know, I think that the the problem is truly. Uh, the the details of the policy, the lack of portability, the lack of uh, 
amount of, of, of true coverage, those kinds of things, you know, I think that if, if, because you know, there are people out there that say, look, okay, I see if the state's trying to ease the burden on Medicare a little bit and ask me to, to kind of help uh, what might be down the road. Okay, maybe. But, but when you get what you get with this, I mean, why don't you just step outside, take uh, $290, light it on fire, light your cigar, and chuck it away because, yeah. because of the actual lack of, of applicable impact to the average person's life. Right. I mean, it really is just a collecting a pool of money that then doesn't really help. Well, and and then you have the administration of all that money. So true, true. That DSD is going. Employment Security Division is going to collect it. DSHS is going to pay it out. I put forth in in the bill that we had this year. I put forth an amendment that would have given us would have given everyone another year to get that long term care plan. They said no, 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 and DSHS went. DSHS went so far as to say. We can't extend the, that possibility that people will get a long-term care plan because the people get, that can afford it are going to go buy it, and then they won't be paying into the fund, and we need to have right. those higher-income people yeah. paying into we, this fund. we, we, we go. got to have the surprise money, right? Basically, yeah. the people that, that haven't exactly. got, gotten it. And can't. Look, see this? Here's my COVID shot card, and on the yeah. back it says, and yeah. I also have long-term care. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's yeah. got to have documentation so it's wow it's, it, it goes it just goes into very in my opinion very very poorly written uh the idea may be fine for some people but it, it the way they've put this together it's mind-boggling i mean so people that are ready to retire in the next three years they're going to pay in and they don't have a choice yeah. and they're going to get nothing because there's a vesting period yeah, right you, you know, have to pay you, in for yeah, what's ten years. yeah the requirement well. somewhere here i have it but it, it's like <coughs> you have to pay in for 10 years uh or you have to pay in in three of the last six years uh to be eligible for the benefit so you got you got people that could pay in for nine years right and and still not be fully vested wow you have you have um as I've said, people that work in Washington but live in Oregon, and they're paying in, and they don't even get the benefit. Right. And then you have people who leave the state. So now just think about all this. So you got you got those retirees that, that are close to retiring, not, not being able to get it. You have people that work in the state but live outside the state, not being able to get it. You have people that pay in for maybe up to years and leave the state for whatever reason and tell me how many as mobile as our society is these days yeah. the chances of anybody staying in this state uh, particularly the way we're going uh, are going to be you know uh, it's just uh, you know, there's just all of these options hmm. that haven't been hmm. looked at and the the actuary based all of that 0.58 on all of these things happening that those people are going to pay in but not be eligible that the retirees are going to pay in uh, and and then you talk even so we have h2a workers particularly on our side of the state the, that they come in to help us with our crops Twenty-five thousand of them they're going to have to pay wow. and mm -hmm. then go back to the country they came to. Yeah. i mean it's Thanks. <laughs> Thanks yeah, for the yeah, contribution. Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, all right. That. So, how, with all, this must switch cheese, man. With this many holes in all of this, uh, what are your your fellow, your colleagues in the Senate from the, the across the aisle? Uh, how do they look themselves uh, in the mirror and say, "Well done, people. Well done." I mean, how how can you even consider this? Well, I I, I have no idea. I mean, we've we've tried to point these things out, uh, and. And the problem is, I mean, we have we have three subcommittees uh, off of the main uh, long-term care committee, and I'm on, I think, all three of those and the long-term care committee, um, and 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 we're looking at all these changes. You know, do we do we allow it to be portable? Well, guess what? Because of the way the actual aerial people looked at it, if it's portable, and people are able to move out of the state and take it with them. It's, it's going to add a 0.44% to that 0.58%. So now you're over a percent. If you, you know, if you cut that in half, you know, it's still 22.22%. I mean, all of these things have been looked at actuarially, assuming that the people from Oregon and Idaho working in Washington are going to pay, mm -hmm. the, that mm -hmm. the people that have paid in and move out of state aren't going to get the benefit. So as we look at trying to 
make this a better program, the cost is just going to go up and up and wow. up. Wow. So basically uh, what we have now, as big a, uh, a, a confusion and uh, maybe uh, ineffective final product that we have now, is as good as it gets under the money that we're allocating yeah, to it, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Wow. All right, so, but the, but it's a law. So what? I mean, you're alerting well, us now and well, others, I mean, but it, it, it's going to happen. I want people to be aware that that this money's coming out of their check, and the only way they can opt out is to look at a long-term care plan. Now, the number of insurance companies that are that are offering these are getting smaller and smaller because they've been inundated. Yeah, uh, yeah, by, they by have the citizens of this state. They have. There are still some out there uh, that are uh, that are working on it, but uh, there are some now. If you're under 40, they don't want to talk to you. If and and then there's others that say, well, in order to do this, you'd have to buy a full life policy of a certain level and with a long term care writer. Um, uh, yeah, so, yeah. I was I was just writing my wife, and, and she said that yeah, we can't afford a private plan right now. Yeah. 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 And, 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 so now, I, yeah. So here I mean, comes my thirty-six thousand. I guess that's, right. That's right. Dang. And, what, and, wait, uh, what are you doing? We bought a long-term care. My wife and I both bought long-term care plans about fifteen, twenty years ago. Oh, yeah. We've been paying through the nose for a long time. But uh, at, at what but, age did you buy that? Oh, we. Were, no, it's going to age them today. So well, I, don't I don't mean know. that. Fifty, fifty something. All right. We were all in right. our fifties when right. we bought it. Uh huh. And. Uh, but let me tell you, the, the coverage is a lot more than uh, uh, 36 Oh, five, yeah. Yeah, you know? I can imagine. Uh, I've been told, and I, this I haven't confirmed, but the average stay in, in a long-term care facility is two years. You're there, you know, at $5,000, you're there for seven months maybe. Wow. And, and even that, then you mm. got to come up with the other two or three grand a month that, that this system doesn't pay for. What I heard was that the Democrats worked out a deal with the Coleman tent camping people. <laughs> and at the end of the five, yeah. seven months, you also get a small tent to that's move about, into. So there is that. Right. Well, that's the, about right. So as you look at this actuarially, and, and, I, and I asked the question in one of our committee meetings, is what was the number of people that the actuarially were going to opt out? How many were going to have the ability to opt out? And the, and their answer was 105,000. Huh. Now, huh. I truly believe that the number is going to be closer to 500,000. If they can yeah. get that policy, yeah. if the system yeah. is such yeah. that they can grab one, but you know, given the um, the closing window to November right. and yeah. the time that it takes to get it done and all of that, I, I don't disagree a, ha a hair with you there, Senator. As long as the the system can. We had to we, absorb it, Senator. We got we got to take news. Okay. We want to keep you around okay. because we've got callers that are got questions, and okay. and uh, Jackson has taken those questions. So I got some questions to ask you. Very so good. we're gonna do some news uh, and uh, get back into our conversation with Senator Curtis King on this Tuesday primary election day. Uh, news Talk KIT. <laughs> Newstock 1280 KIT, the morning news continues uh, with our conversation with Senator Curtis King. Um, Senator, how many uh, years in office for you as we look back just, on? Uh, just finished my 14th. 14th, uh, man. Yeah, That's hard old. to believe. So you know where the bodies are buried. Uh, you know where uh, the shortcuts are and where the good guys go to lunch. So well, that's about it. Yeah, <laughs> at least uh, at least I'm not there. So well, well yeah, the buried part. We're, yes, we're glad for that. I, that's <laughs> going to lunch yeah. with the good guys. That's okay. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Continuing our conversation uh, about uh, about the long term care insurance. Uh, uh, had a couple of questions. First one was uh, if you already have long term care. Uh, what do you do? I mean, so, so can can you can you yeah. opt out? What's yeah? What's yeah. the scoop so, of that? So October first, uh, 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 Employment Security Division is supposed to have a form available online that you fill out. And I don't know what the form li is like because guess what? They haven't put it together yet. Uh, but you fill that out, and 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 therefore apply for this exemption. They then look it over. If they give you the exemption, you download that piece of paper that shows you are exempted and you have to turn you the individual has to turn that into their employer and if you oh. change jobs you got to take that with you and give it to your next employer 
Uh, that's how it's done. But it's up to the individual to get that done. Wow. So so now we're uh, the the thing kicks in. Like you say, a lot of people don't know about this. Uh, and I'm one of them, and it kicks in, and I go, holy moly, I didn't even hear about this. Can I go out now in 2023 and get my long-term care, and then I'm off the roll? Nope. You're, you're done. Once, you, you, once you're locked in, you're locked you, in. You have, to, oh, you have to have the long-term yeah. care plan in place by November 1st of 2021. Now, you don't have to apply for the exemption. You have until... December, the end of December of 2022 to apply, but but you're going to be paying that 0.58 that whole length right. of time, and you're not going to get that money back. Right. There are no Jeez. refunds in this plan. Oh, this is crazy. Uh, okay. Uh, the other question was, uh, I have an 18-year-old, uh, 18 working part-time in college. Can he opt out now, or is he stuck with the state program? He's If he doesn't have a long-term care plan, yeah, he's, he's going to have to pay. But but uh, you're saying hey at 18 maybe you can you can maybe get one for affordable that I, I think there are yeah. plans out there at that age that are affordable yeah, yeah. Uh, and I would encourage them to look at it if if they have the means by which to do it uh, if people have other questions can they can they call your office they, or they, they are more than welcome would love to have them call my office okay uh, I'll give you the number yeah it's, it's 360-786-7626. Um, and if, if there's no answer, just leave the message. Okay. Uh, we will follow up and we will do our level best to get an answer back to you as soon as we can. 360-786-7626. That's correct. All right. Yes. We will make that available. Uh, and, and I'll give it to uh, Jackson and folks, if you just want to call us at our regular number at 972-5481 and grab that number. Uh, is it? Uh, I suppose I could Google Senator Curtis King oh, yes. and, and find um, that yeah. number and yes. find your office yeah. as well. So yes, you, you know, if you're driving right now and you can't write it down or something, yeah, yeah just get on and and Google Senator Curtis King. All you, right, you know me. I have a master plan now after hearing this. So what I'll do is, since I'm now you know beyond 65, I will defy the law, get arrested, yeah. put in jail, and that'll be my long-term care. <laughs> yeah. I'll be in jail. Three, three meals, meals a day. Three meals a day. Yeah. Medical. Not, not only that. Medical. But, you'll be able to get a uh, college degree while yeah, you're that, in jail. That, There you go. And, I and, like uh, it. And uh, <laughs> we're going to pay it. The citizens will pay for that. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you, legislature. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. I, let's let's move on to something yeah. that might maybe in its own way is even more sideways than, oh. than this. Well, but, but one more yeah, question. No, if you're no. on Social Security, do you still have to pay into that? I, you're not, I don't you, believe so. Because you know it's not coming so, from an employer, right? Okay, yeah, all it's right. It's not a W two. Okay, all, all right. right. The other issue, yeah, was was these police reforms crazy? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, you know, I think Dave can probably play the cricket sound when I say uh, the reaction to the Republicans' request for for a special session to uh, uh, thank you to to you know. To, to, to try to uh, correct some of these things, not happening. I know that there's been a call for that, oh, and, but and it's falling on deaf ears. If we have a special deafiers. session, it'll be about transportation. Yeah. It won't be about police reform. Yeah, all right. In my humble opinion. Uh, uh, Tacoma uh, has, a, has a murder. I think it was over the weekend. I don't know if you heard about this. I have uh, not. No. Uh, had, a, had a murder. Uh, a, a guy runs from the scene. Uh, they can't chase the guy That's because correct. they don't have probable cause. That's correct. They can't send a, an officer to go chase this guy he, who might run, who then might need to be tackled by a canine or whatever because they don't have probable cause. So they can guard the body. We got the body. And that's what they did. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they basically, uh, we, we got uh, the body and, and we guard the scene. We've secured the scene. We've secured the scene. But we can't go get the guy that you think, you know, that everyone says the guy is in red coat. He ran down this street. Right. What is going on? Oh, it's, it, believe me, that's just the tip of the yeah. iceberg. I yeah. mean, uh, uh, <laughs> we, we could be here for, if, if, I, if I had all the information, Jeez. we could be here for hours. Uh, we, we changed police taxi, tactics and what we can allow. You can no yeah. longer use uh, tear gas unless you have the permission of the largest or the highest elected official in your area. So the mayor, usually, in, in a city. The mayor would have to approve that. Well, 
by the time you get approval from the mayor, and I can guarantee you that in Seattle, you're yeah. never going to get that <laughs> yeah, that's approval. Right. Or in Tacoma, right. you will never get that right, approval. Right, right. Um, we've, we've limited some of the equipment they, they can use. You can no longer go get surplus uh, vehicles, as an example, where you can carry six or eight people from from the military. Right. You can't do that anymore. We're limiting and watching what what our police dogs are able to do. So we we'd rather protect the police dog than protect the policeman's life. I mean, we've set up, uh, we've given the uh, uh, what is it called the the joint. Uh, there's a transfer. Yeah, I don't have it's the right. It's CJTC, um, and I, I had that this morning, but it just left me. But but they're a group that, that oversees a lot of the other things that our police can do and how they do it. We've expanded their authority. Uh, we've, we've developed a group that will look into any shooting, I believe, particularly any, any yeah, death. Right. Uh, and this and group will be basis, appointed yeah. Yeah. by the governor. So you can imagine who is going to be on that committee to oversee all of these things. Uh, I mean, and then you look at the funding. I mean, just Seattle is a perfect example. They cut their funding. They have lost 250 officers since they started making these reforms, and they're projected to lose another 50. And, and not this last weekend, but the weekend before, they had six shootings. And the mayor came out and said, we got to stop this. We can't let this happen. We got to find more money, and we got to try and get those police officers back. But who in their right mind yeah, that's right. wants to be a police officer? We've, we've made it easier for them to be personally sued for the things that they've done. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we've, we've just gone overboard because... Uh, the the minority community has said, well, you're arresting more of us than you're than you're arresting whites, and it's not about well who's doing the crime, uh, and if whites are doing the crime, they need to be arrested too, but it's about it's not about who's doing what crime is being committed, it's about whether you're a minority. Yeah, or not. it's crazy. Equity policing or not? Well, Washington exactly. State Criminal Justice Training Commission, I think, is yes, what you were. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. for. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, and all of this is done under the uh, flag of uh, of equity, of um, of what the the byproduct is is the criminal gets protected more than the citizen. Uh, we you know and we and we basically are making our law enforcement folks on the front line the sacrificial lamb of this if i'm a cop in today's environment boy I, you know uh, even the guy that sponsored the bill said we want people to slow down we want people to think you know meanwhile my house is on fire and this guy's making off with uh, my kid i mean right. it, it, it's just it's so counterintuitive yes if we've got problems in policing we need to address them this is only going to make more problems of a different oh, kind. It's, and it just goes on. I mean, now you, you extend this to drugs now. Uh, I mean, we had a bill that they wanted to uh, have, I think, the health care authority and another uh, agency look at what is the reasonable amount that could be considered personal use, heroin, oxycodone, the 10 major uh, that are all illegal, but what is, and, and it was going to make it legal, so that if you were stopped and you only had that amount on you that it was considered personal use, you couldn't be arrested. Uh, I mean, and, and we said, well, how are you going to get people to be treated? And the bill that we passed, it says, well, you stop an individual, if you find they have a pocket full of heroin, uh, and you can say to them, we're going to confiscate your heroin, but we have a program available uh, through the, the state of Washington to help you get off drugs. Would you be willing to, to yeah. go do that? Here's and when they tell you where to put it, you know, and walk away, that's all you can do. You can't, and, you're, and then they can do that two times. But there's no method to keep track of how many times an individual's been stopped. And then the third time you can arrest them for a misdemeanor, if, which would get him in front of a judge. If you oh. know that it was the third time and yeah. there's any way to prove it. <laughs> See, now, Lance, here's the problem with that. My tolerance for heroin is much greater than yours. Yes, you of know course. That. Yes, so of course. my personal amount is going to be a lot bigger yes. than yours. Yeah, well, there you go. And so. there is lines of problem. And you're joking, but therein lies a the problem. 
Wow. All That's right. Well, insane, man. This is hair pulling stuff, uh, oh, Senator. Me, and, yeah. and it's almost like the Republicans really have had no voice. Well, I mean, you guys, you guys try to do things, but you're just twenty eight to twenty one yeah. in the Senate. It's uh, fifty seven to forty one in the House, oh. and and a Democratic governor who just signs everything yeah. along these lines like it was water. And a Supreme um, Court that t tends to go uh, that well, way anyway. Yeah, and I like to refer to them as the not-so-Supreme Court. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that's but right. But they do. I mean, you know, throw in uh, uh, capital gains, which is an income tax. And, uh, you know, I mean, it just goes on and on. We could we could be here all day uh, talking about. So, so I mean, things. the only way out of this police reform is um, through tragedy, right? I well, mean, to have I'm, things I'm, happen and to have... Have somebody go, oh, God, that was not, oh, that's Unintended. not what, that's what? not what we intended. I mean. So 2020, the number of reported murders was the highest in what, in the state patrol's database, uh, huh. all the, dating all the way back to 1980. Uh, rape, uh, highest in 25 years. Aggrava aggravated assault in 2020, highest in 25 years. Um the no contact or probation violation 2020 highest recorded in yeah. in in data in their database assault of law enforcement officers the highest recorded uh, in 2020 this is what we're seeing and 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 you just look at you know i i get on you look at the paper this morning what do they have a picture of the 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 insurrection or whatever you want to call it in dc they they the papers never talk about the daily uh, uh, things that have happened in Portland and Seattle and, and Olympia, uh, and particularly in Portland, on a daily basis, the, the riots that took place. Yep. And yep. I had somebody that went to downtown Portland recently, and they said there were more plywood windows than there yep. were windows. Yep. The, the, the parks are surrounded hmm. by a fence. I mean, this is what we're coming to in our large cities. Go look at Chicago and see how many killings they have yeah, on a given yeah. weekend. And you, you never hear about this stuff. Interesting thing. There's a statistic uh, Jackson found the other day on uh, on gun purchases in states across the country. And the number one state uh, for guns so far this year is Illinois. And I think it's people arming up in case the Chicago thing comes their way. Something like... Uh, uh, nationally, we've had something like 22 million yeah. guns uh, purchased because people, people a, uh, are seeing the defund movement and are seeing the handcuffs put on police and are rec rec recognizing and realizing that they're going to have to maybe fend for themselves the way things are going in our urban well, centers. And, and that's exactly right, and that's why. I mean, oh. we're, I forget the state, but I want to say it was California. If you if you steal something that's less than nine hundred ninety five dollars, they're not going to arrest you. Yeah. I mean, I mean. And, and if you should if you should trip over a policeman on your way out the store, yeah. they won't prosecute you. I mean, so. you know, as I was telling you earlier, we got stores where people are just walking in, grabbing stuff, and walking out. And 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 it's happening here in Yakima. Oh, in Yakima. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And, and it's like, yeah. Well, what are we doing? How do you expect those businesses to stay in business? when people can just walk in and, and nothing's going to happen to them. Well, what separates, you know, polite society from the rest of the world is, is the rule of law and everybody agreeing to uh, reasonable rules and developing a respect, a confidence and belief in law enforcement. Yep. And when all of that goes away, uh, then it's survival of the fittest, and, uh, and then it gets ugly fast. Yeah. So as a country and a society, we need to, to make rules that make sense that people will respect and, and will do what they're intended to do. We need to have policies that support officers so that they're seen as the good guys protecting society instead of, you know, not the next person to throw rocks at. Uh, we, and, and our legislative activities are taking us, taking us in the exact opposite direction of where we need to go Absolutely. to, to re-cement the glue that's whole society together. They they, re, they they only wanted to talk about the few people that that uh, showed up for a demonstration in Olympia. That's all we heard about. Yeah, that's they, right. They never once mentioned uh, the the basically yep. the riots that were in downtown Olympia. And and you know the mayors of these cities are are complacent until mm -hmm. 
the group went down to the mayor's house, to their and house. stood in front of it <laughs> yeah. and demonstrated. That's right. And a person was going to throw a Molotov cocktail at their front door, and, a, and an individual just happened to be there videotaping and yelled at him and scared him, and he took off. Then the mayor said, oh, police, you can come and help. Me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it just goes on and on. It's, it's amazing what we've done to our, our poor police officers in, in, this, in this state and in this country. About 40 seconds to go, Senator. I guess what we, uh, what we count on uh, our conservative uh, lawmakers to do is to continue to craft better solutions and present them and, and hope that at some point they get some traction, right? I mean, you, gotta, you can't just throw your hands up. You've got to continue to work on ideas and changes and, and shove them their way, and hopefully they'll take the bait. And, and you're exactly right. That we, just, we can't give up. We've got to keep fighting the fight. Uh, the challenge we had this, this last session was that everything was by Zoom for the most part. Sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, and Democrats talked to Democrats. Republicans talked to Republicans. There wasn't this give and take. It just didn't happen. And so they had agreements, and that's why you saw all of this stuff passed is because, as an example, they rolled out their operating budget at yep. $59 billion two days before we signed he died. No changes, nothing. <laughs> you just accepted it, and yeah. they voted it out. That's uh, not the way to govern, um, and that's what we were stuck with in Washington for now. Senator Curtis thank King, you. thank you for your time this morning. Uh, always fine. good to see you. Uh, spot on, on as far as our, we're concerned on all of these issues and, and uh it, it's nice to know, as frustrating as it is over there, that, that we do have folks there fighting with the same ideas and the same goals that uh, we know Yakima has. So yep. thank you very much. Appreciate the comments and appreciate the opportunity.